It's Friday, people! First Friday in the month of June, and everybody's on campus. We're talking transfer athletes, summer enrollees, everybody's here. Let's get it popping right now. Number one show, hottest show on the streets, talking your Crimson Tide. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. You know what to do. We're bringing you the show, Magic City of Birmingham, streaming it to you on YouTube. Hit the like button right now. Smash subscribe right now. Make this your network platform, channel, and space to talk Bama. Turn all of those notifications on. You hit that bell. You make sure you miss nothing when you're talking about your tide. Also, Turn on all, be sure to follow us on our Facebook and Twitter as well as for streaming to you the show. But got a lot of action to get to you on this evening, and we want you guys being a part of the show. You can do this by calling 205 448 1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard 205 448 1358. And one more time 205 448 1358 the daily super chat go $75 daily super chat go and appreciate all of you got my man John Ivory in the building as well and without further ado John we're gonna jump to topic number one here of the conversation on uh yesterday I had the pleasure of being at the Knicks Kids Foundation the Knicks Kids function the annual golf tournament 
Coach Saban has during the summer at the old Overton Golf Course here in the Birmingham area. Uh, the Knicks Kids Foundation, it has donated uh, near $11 million to help several causes, uh, several causes, including ones dealing with children since 2007, where Coach Saban and Miss Terry made landfall in Tuscaloosa. But this particular setting, uh, you know, Coach Saban got a chance to talk about a number of different things with the media. Uh, one of the big things he spoke on was everybody's on campus now. We're talking the summer enrollees, all the freshman guys for the summer, the whole freshman class is on campus. Uh, the transfer guys, the three transfers that came in, Tyler Harrell, Tyler Steen, uh, Miles Kitzelman, everybody's together. Everybody's on campus. They've had the team meetings. They've discussed things. They've had conversations. Summer workouts has kicked off. They have kicked off here for the tide. And Coach Saban talked about all three transfers. He spoke on Harold Kitzelman and uh, Tyler Steen. And the one thing he wants from all three of these guys is mesh well with the young talent on the team. Saban is all about building the team with the young talent, getting the best four- and five-star freshmen, getting them in the program, getting those guys developed, their body in order, and making sure they have the tools needed to become successful players on the field. So he's always about getting that young talent. But when it comes to the transfer portal, Saban's going to get guys that have experience, that feel a need on the team, but he also wants those guys to come in and mesh well, jail well, learn, grow, develop, uh, be leaders for these young guys so that you have a clear mixture of young talent and experienced guys to help get you to the ultimate goal, which is a championship. So that's the main thing he wants from Steen, Harrell, and Kitzelman is just to mesh. Now, and looking at all three of these guys individually, uh, he spoke highly of Tyler Steen, talking about how the young man from Vanderbilt has a lot of experience in the SEC, which he does. He's played in 33 career games, started – and 33 career games as an offensive tackle at Vanderbilt. He's got 21 starts as a left tackle, 12 starts as a right tackle, the 6'5", 315-pounder. He's got experience on the offensive line. And what Alabama is hoping, praying, that with him, he immediately solves that void at left tackle, left behind by Evan Neal, who's now in the NFL. So if Steen can come in here and immediately solve that void, that's a big deal. Because strong protection by the offensive line, not only are you going to have that balance offensively and getting that run game consistent, but you're going to also decrease the number of sacks Bryce Young took a season ago, and Young can really pop off as he's trying to get back-to-back -back Heisman trophies and win a national championship as a starting quarterback for Alabama, but that's just Tyler Steen. Looking at Tyler Harrell, uh, Saban is excited about this young man's speed. He talked about it on Thursday, mentioning that, you know, after losing Jamison Williams or graduating JMO to the draft, you know, Saban mentioned, we kind of want to see if we can get a guy from the portal that has that type of speed, uh, big playability, acceleration, burst, explosiveness, can separate away from defensive backs at any point in the route. And you have that with Harrell at 6'1", you know, 175, 180 pounds, a young man from South Florida who, you know, in high school in the 40-yard dash, killing it. High school, 100-meter track speed, burning it. And being reported that, you know, during one of Louisville's pro days, he had ran a 4-2-4-40. That's now been dropped down to a 4-1-9-40. I mean, Tyler Harrell's got six speed. And getting him out there and that chemistry, he'll be able to work with Young and the other receivers in Alabama's rotation. That's going to be fun to watch right there. And then, last but not least, when he brought up Miles Kitzelman, you know, Saban said this is a young man – that adds a lot of depth, that adds much-needed physicality at that tight end position, which he does, coming over from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. And for Kinselman, he's not 
a pass catching threat now. Not saying that he will not saying that he won't ever be one. He can most surely develop into one. But what he does bring is that bully mentality and just driving people off the football and setting up the run game and making that run game more consistent. He can also pass protect. So if you need to have max protection on a play, Kitzelman can really uh, really uh, help you know, in blocking for Bryce Young. He can also flare out of the backfield, uh, for, for flare into the flat, and catch a pass here and there if needed. But he really adds that physicality and brute strength at that position. So save and excited about all three guys. They're all here. They're all taking part in summer classes. They're all taking part in summer workouts. Can they mesh fully with the team is the big thing there. Because uh, in uh, the past under Coach Saban, we have seen transfers come in here in the summer, and they have meshed really well, and they've gelled really well. And a few of these guys – Helped Alabama win championships when they came in. You think about off the top, Landon Dickerson came in the summer for the order state, offensive lineman, 2019, uh, a year later, LD. Dickerson helped the Crimson Tide to an undefeated national championship season and was the glue on that offensive line. You go down from Landon Dickerson, you look at guys like Jacob Coker. You know, Coker came in 2014 uh, that summer, Transfer Florida State. And we learned behind Blake Sims for a year. But 2015, what happened? Poker became the guy, the quarterback. 3,000-yard guy. 3,110 passing yards. Took Alabama national championship and won that. I think about Slotty Pippen. Richard Mullaney came in the summer of 2015 from Oregon State. He comes in here and did a really good job. Had 390 yards receiving. 38 catches, five touchdowns in 2015. You know, Garrick Dieter, same thing, 2016. You know, he comes in here, wide receiver transfer from Bowling Green, and, you know, he helps Alabama win an SEC championship, you know, that season. And then you look at, you know, here recently, Jamison Williams coming over from Ohio State this past summer, well, last summer, and then Henry To'o To'o coming over from Tennessee, you know, both of those two guys were able to mesh well with the team. And, you know, Alabama win an SEC championship, win a good year Cotton Bowl, came close to defeating Georgia for a uh, national title. So we've seen here some guys who have come in here in the summer. They've meshed well with the team and it's provided big success. So hopefully Steen, Harrell, Kitzelman mesh with this group, learn, grow, develop within the system and they can have an impact on this team right here. But we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. We're just getting cranked up upon our return. We go to the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your chats, your interactions. We talk to you after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. Throw them foes up. I'm Malachi Moore, and you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Nine players have teamed up and released the Alabama Team Paper, which is a video yearbook they put out for sale direct to fans. Now, for the first time, small dollar purchases from the fans can support the players as a group as well as a great cause because one dollar of every subscription payment is donated to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Be a five-star fan base and support your team and a great cause with Team Paper. Check it out at teampaper.com Alabama. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. 
you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. What's going on, people? We're back in here from the break on a Friday TGIF edition of the show. First Friday in the month of June, in my own words. Yours truly, Stephen Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate you guys checking us out on the show. We got a couple of super chats that we want to get to right now. And first and foremost, I think my man Jamie Wilhelm with that 499 in the donation pot. Appreciate that love there from Jamie. Then we got my man Lucian is in here. My man Big Lucian with that $5 donation showing up there. Appreciate him. And El Presidente Waylon has dropped in here. Our man Waylon with that 499 in the super chats. Appreciate the love coming from all of you. But Phone lines are open right now to take your calls, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. Call statement brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. As you're getting your thoughts in here, John Ivory, Tua Tagovailoa is talking his talk. Tua confident, bro. Tua is having a very confident OTAs, and we're seeing it. The throws he's putting to Tyreek Hill and others on the money. And Mike McDaniel, head coach of the Dolphins, has been talking about it throughout OTAs, praising to his arm strength. Same thing for Tyreek Hill. Same thing for Jalen Waddle. I mean, when you got a coaching staff that believes in you, your confidence just oozes out. And for the first time into his career in the NFL, entering his third season, he's got a full coaching staff that believes in him. And uh, he's taking the heart. Before we continue the topic of Tua, we're gonna we're gonna go to this car right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Oh Lord, it's Friday night. Let's all do it right. Slip down on Emily's pound cakes. Get you a piece out of Everything's gonna be all right. Well, Stephen, what's going on in Birmingham, Alabama tonight? Lay the news on me. What's good? What's good, Wagon? Everybody is here. But the Crimson Tide now, uh, all the freshmen are here. The summer guys have arrived, uh, and also all three transfers here. Uh, Coach Saban is, is excited about this team. Uh, he, he got a chance to, you know, hit the golf ball around a little bit at the uh, Knicks Kids uh, Foundation Golf Tournament on yesterday, and he was wearing his electric blue Aflac short. So the Aflac company, they're getting their money's worth. <laughs> Uh, well, it sounds like wearing those electric blue shorts. I bet he was a sight to see there. Did you hit? Did you tee off with him, Mary? Was you playing golf yesterday? Come on, tell well, me. Well, well, Wagon, I want the tee off with it, but his security was around him, so they wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> well, well, all right. I think the security need to be there when Jimbo teed off on him. Anyway, all right. Everything's looking good. I just thought I'd call in here on Friday night. Blue Ridge gang, y'all looking good. Everybody in the chat. Everybody across the world, y'all know y'all make this show the number one show on YouTube, the hottest show on the street. Man, you've got the beats. John's got the beats going. Everybody's doing great. Y'all looking good. Be safe this weekend. Uh, let's remember all these people in these shootings. Let's, let's say a prayer for them. Remember all this bad stuff that's happening in the world. Shouldn't be going on, and everything should be going smooth in this country. I don't know what's wrong, but we've we, we got a lot, to, a lot of stuff to deal with and a lot of stuff straighten out. But all right, everybody, y'all be safe. I'll be back one day next week. Y'all looking good. Have a good weekend, Stephen. Y'all be safe. Bye-bye, everyone. Appreciate Waylon calling into the show on a Friday. And to wrap this up here on Tua, he is going to be good for the season. He's looking good throughout the offseason. I think Tua is about to show the world why he was for real, for real. First round pick number five overall in the 2021 NFL Draft. But quick topic here, and this goes to Christian Harris, who was taken in the third round uh, of this recent draft, number 75 overall to those Houston Texans. Christian Harris has signed his rookie deal, good for four years, a little bit over $5 million, a $1.69 million signing bonus. So congratulations to Christian, got his contract with the Texans. Hopefully, you know, he will have a very successful career in the NFL with under coach Lovey Smith 
where the Texans are concerned. But we take a break here, folks. Don't touch that down. When we get back, we sit down with the sack sensei, the sack guru, pass rush coach, Javon Gopi, to talk one Dallas Turner and the work he's been doing with Turner to get him right for his sophomore year. We'll be back after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw the foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We are locked and loaded here, people. Back in from the break on a Friday. Number one form talking your Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But right now, we go to the In My Own Words hotline. We got a heavy, heavy hitter, big OG trainer, pass rush guru, pass rush specialist, the Sack Sensei is here at South Florida. Been working with the beast, Dallas Turner. Getting him ready for a sophomore year. We bring it to the, to the big room. My man, Javon Gopi in the building. Sack Sensei, what's happening, brother? Hey, Stephen, what's going on, man? I appreciate you having me, man. How, how you doing today? Man, I, I can't complain, man. Doing just fine, doing fantastic. Happy to have you here, Coach Javon. And my, my first thought to you is, being able to work with so many different edge rushers, whether it's defensive linemen, uh, uh, whether it's outside linebackers, but looking at Dallas Turner, what sets this young man apart or what makes him stand out to you, his pass rushing ability going into year two at Alabama? Man, I, I think I would start with just his confidence. That's, that's the biggest thing, man. Um, I think, you know, him playing at one of the primetime high schools out of South Florida at St. Thomas Aquinas, and then going to, you know, probably the most prominent college in Alabama, you know, so he, he's seen nothing but great success, you know, so I think his confidence and, and understanding how to work when it comes to, you know, just being an athlete and being a, a great football player, I think it's bar none, you know, and, and, and that's and that's very um, crazy to say with his previously, you know, talents and athleticism and, you know, but I think the biggest thing is his confidence, man. I think that's what stands out the most. Absolutely. So, so I mean, Coach Siobhan, when you look at just – you know, Will Anderson is a force by himself, and we all know this, him returning for his junior season at one outside linebacker position. But just when you look at Dallas, in your opinion, uh, working with him, how does Turner make Anderson even better when you look at what, what Dallas brings to the table? Oh, that, that's easy, man, because no longer can you double-team Will Anderson. <laughs> I think that – I think Dallas kind of proved that going into the national championship where he had two sacks. Um, I think moving forward, going into this season, I think no longer you can only, you know, double team Will. I think, you know, Dallas is going to bring a lot of tension, which is going to free Will up a lot. Um, and I think, you know, I think teams will be creative on how they block them, different blocking schemes, slide protections, shipping with the backs. But, you know, that's the biggest thing. Uh, Will's going to have a lot more opportunities because you can no longer just double team him because Dallas is definitely, you know, something to mess with. When we, we, we just look at Coach just you know, Dallas' edge-bending ability, the, the violent hands, just his get-off. For, for you, what's been kind of the biggest strength that you've noticed in Dallas' pass-rushing technique? Well, what's the biggest strength you have seen so far just from working with him this offseason? Yeah, definitely his acceleration. Once he bends the edge, <laughs> nobody's running away from him. You know, that, that's first and foremost. You know, he I, I believe when his time comes, he'll be a – a 4-4 guy. He'll go to the combine around a 4-4. So, you know, he's explosive and electric off the edge. So, you know, once he bends the edge and turns that corner, uh, good luck. Good luck. We got, we got my man, Coach Javon Gopi, on the line right here. Sack Sensei. 
pass rush specialist, pass rush guru, working with one Dallas Turner getting ready for his sophomore season here on the phone lines if you're just tuning into the show. And, Coach, so uh, it, do you have just any goals you would want to see Dallas hit here in year two? I know coming off a of freshman year where freshman All-American, freshman All-SEC, but we're all about growing and getting better and improving upon numbers. Is, is there any personal goals you want to see Dallas hit yeah, but between me and Dallas, I think, you know, one thing that we harp on a lot is just really coming out this year and working multiple moves. You see what I'm saying? I, I think his freshman year, he beat a lot of guys off the edge with just pure great athleticism. So I think going into year two, he's been working extremely hard on just working multiple moves, man, because he understands with great success comes great responsibility. So like I said, no longer will Will be double teamed. So he's going to get a lot of those cyber seconds as well. He's going to get a lot of those uh, situations where they're chipping him with running back and tight end. So just, you know, I, I, we work on putting him in situations, um, you know, that he got to work multiple moves. So that's the biggest thing that I'm excited for because he's been working extremely hard, man. The day Dallas got off the plane after spring, you know, we were we were in the gym literally uh, that same day when he got off the plane. And, you know, it, that was one thing that he was concerned. And he really just wanted the opportunity to just keep tightening up his moves and, you know, building that arsenal. So, you know, that's one thing you can expect from Dallas Turner is coming out the gate working multiple moves, man. So speaking of those multiple moves here, Coach, uh, what, what, what could those multiple moves be? I know he got a lot of guys off just pure speed, but what could those multiple moves entail, in your opinion? Man, it is, Steven, it's endless, man. So, some guys are limited based off of their skill set as far as what moves they can work, but literally he can open up the whole bag, man. So he can go speed to power where he can work outside rushes and you know work those double swipes and those, you know, those uh, ghost long arms. And then you know he's definitely – you know, strong enough to work those power moves. So I, I literally think, you know, I think we're all, you know, excited to see what, what's, what's yet to come because, like I said, his bag is <laughs> it's full with a lot of tricks, man. So expect some cross chops, expect some inside moves, expect some long arms, and, you know, just expect, you know, for a, a big breakout year, you know, as far as Dallas taking it to another level, you know, and, and, and it, it is all right as being a young superstar. Oh, baby, looking forward to seeing what Dallas Turner puts on this field and puts on this tape in the upcoming fall as a sophomore. We're joined by Coach Javon Gopi, pass rush specialist, pass rush guru, the Sack Sensei out of South Florida, working with one Dallas Turner. Coach, man, we appreciate you coming on here, taking some time to spend with us. You take care of yourself. Be good. Keep Dallas grinding over there. Hey, I, I appreciate you, Stephen, and hey, I, I didn't get a chance to say this when you put me on, but hey, appreciate it. That's the greatest intro of life, man, so keep doing it, Stephen. I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Coach Javon Gopi right here on the show. Sack Sensei, pass rush specialist guru, working with one Dallas Turner. I am amped to see Dallas on the field. I mean, Will is a, Will is a force. The Terminator Anderson, Anderson's a force. With Dallas Turner with him, they have a different moves. That can't be yeah, get, get me to September. Wake me up when September get here, John. I'm, I'm going to hibernate to September get here. But we're going to take a break right here, folks. When we get back, we jump back into the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your interactions right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. What's up, Bama Nation? This is Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman, and you're listening to my guy, Stephen M. Smith, in my own words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll, time, roll. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, we're back into the action here on a Friday TGIF edition of the show. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate having my man, Coach Javon Gopi, the sack sensei out of South Florida, working with one Dallas Turner. I am pumped to see what Dallas does as a sophomore in the coming fall. But we're going to go to the phone lines to grab your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. And I'm going to call in 205-448-1358. And we grab this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name. And where are you calling from? Yo, Stephen M. Smith, this is. Senador Hines, a.k.a. Mr. Coach Spook, man. How you doing tonight, sir? Man, man, bruh, I'm doing good, man. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to see Dallas Turner this fall, man. Like, the guys are on campus now. This is a, this is a good summer right here about to, about to brew up. I'm I'm, I'm excited, Stephen. I, I like I like how the spring ball went. I like um, – I just like the buildup for everything, all the uncertainties everywhere. And I'm going to say this a lot – when I when I get to call in this this off season because I'm looking at the roster up and down and I'm going and looking at game film from last year you know all the close games the Texas A and M game and I'm looking at I you know every time you watch these games I don't know how many fans out there do it but every time you watch these games you look for something different you know like me I look I look at the guys on the sideline who's who's up even when they're not getting the playing time when mistakes are being made and you know. Who's that guy that's over there on the sideline talking trash? Like, I'm paying attention to all these little things, and, and I really see a determination um, based off the spring game. I see a determination in that locker room to really be, to really compete. And uh, I think Nick Saban is not preaching NIL. I don't think Nick Saban is preaching playing time. I think Nick Saban is preaching uh, what he's been preaching for the whole time. If you come to Alabama, we're going to allow you – the best opportunities to become the best football player you can become and, and, and move on to the next level. We're going to allow you the best opportunity, not saying that you're going to take the, the best, you're going to take advantage of, but we're going to present that opportunity for you. We have the best way, the best avenue for you to take this opportunity. And for, for that to be, you know, a, a concept and a thing that grasps, it takes mature individuals. And I think that's how we edge out a lot of teams in the SEC. And that's why we've been able to sustain the dominance that we have. A lot of people look at the X's and O's, but it, I think it all starts with a mindset. And this this freshman group, you look at a lot of the interviews and a lot of the attention that these guys are getting on some of these other social media uh, channels, you know, uh, destroying and AJ Green and all those guys is, highlighting these high school players, and a lot of these Alabama recruits are out here, you know, just getting in work, putting in work. 707, I see our 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 skills players just everywhere putting in work, this, you know, from last year to this year, the recruits coming in next year. Like, it's, it's just so much to be excited about. But this defense, man, Steven, if we can get a deep rotation early in the season to get, you know, I'm talking about an 18 to 24 man rotation, you know, and I'm – you know, that's hard to do in today's day and age with, you know, guys complaining and stuff. But if we can get somehow work that, you know, I'm talking about a three-man rotation at, in the inside linebacker, a, a nice four-man rotation at, at the outside linebacker, a, a eight- to nine-man rotation at D-line, and, and having a solid six-man rotation at your, at your secondary, like, we, we can do some things with the talent we have. And if the young guys just stay ready this year and learn from, you know, a Jai Hall and all those guys that, that that thought they were ready but really wasn't ready, wasn't giving their all, if they can stay ready and go out there 
uh, in games against like New Mexico State and go in and still run the score up and continue to move the ball even if we just running it. If they go out there and dominate like they like 2016 uh, team did, man, we can see something special with the amount of talent we have. And I'm just excited, man. Um, my question to you is, who are you excited about as far as freshmen? Um, as far as freshmen on the defensive side of the ball, who you think is going to be able to get some early uh, playing time? Uh, I mean, like, I mean, like impact playing time. It doesn't matter what level of the defense. Who do you think is going to be able to get some impact playing time? Again, thank I you for taking my call. I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely, I, I, Senator. I see too. I see Jaheem Otis on the defensive line. He will get playing time as a freshman. I see Otis, and I see Jeremiah Alexander. He will get work in an outside linebacker. Which game will it be? Remains to be seen, but Jeremiah Alexander will get work in, and I really like Big 91 Jaheim Otis, those two freshmen right there. We take this call. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name, and where you calling from? Hey, Stephen M. It's uh, Robert from Mobile. Rob, what's happening, man? Well, this name, uh, NIL world, is getting uh, pretty pricey now. You got uh, Ryan Day with the OSU saying that they need – what thirteen million dollars to compete <laughs> with uh, with the other NIL deals? I guess these players are getting. Well, I'm not sure how he knows how much he needs, but I guess he's looking and seeing what's going on out there. I suppose. Um, I guess this is going to turn out to be some kind of a. I guess college's going to turn out to be some kind of a minor league of, of the NFL or something. The way these things are going right now, uh, like Saban was trying to get the relay until Jimbo flew off the handle and everybody got mad at him. That is saving. That uh, you're going to have to seek some kind of a structure on this in these NIL deals. Otherwise, I mean, it's just going to be a free for all. We know they're just on any rule. And without that, you got Ohio State saying how much money they need. It's going to end up with just uh, with the schools who can raise to get the most money, these players the most money in NIL are going to end up, I guess, running college foot or winning championships. Uh, buying championships, I get well buying whatever, but it is getting uh, you know. I mean, it's a free fall right now. Uh, how do you get structure on it? Who knows? I did like. I was hoping the SEC would uh, be able to come to some kind of a conclusion on on these divisions and uh, and the number of games they can play during the season. I've always thought the divisions needed to go. If you if it weren't for it, uh, SEC East and SEC West, Alabama would at least have definitely have one more championship than they do right now because we would have had a repeat uh, that after that kick six. Can you imagine what Alabama would have done to Auburn the next weekend after that kick six? They would have, they would have demolished them and gone on to demolish Florida State and won the national championship. So that division cost us at least one. I think it, was, it may have been another one if you really think about it. So it's great to get rid of divisions in the SEC. They never should have had them in the first place. It's just meaningless. It always made the two best teams not playing your biggest games uh, sometimes, and that wasn't that wasn't good. But I was hoping we can get the nine games, although I, I kind of do understand some of these teams that don't want nine because they, they automatically diminish your chances of going to a bowl, maybe even to a, a national championship. But without divisions, at least you get the chance of redeeming yourself by, by, winning, the, by winning your uh, conference championship, which is, again, Alabama has been denied a couple of times. Because of these this division, the, these divisions, so hopefully that so hopefully that'll be good to get rid of those. But yeah, and uh, in this NIL world, I mean, you got our whole Ohio State uh, coach hitting their boosters up for this for some cash. Uh, I guess this is how it's going to go now. Appreciate those thoughts there. My man Robert from Mobile calling in on a Friday, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. As you guys are still getting your thoughts together here, we're going to do a quick topic, John. This one goes to Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith. The Philadelphia Eagles got some cooking, y'all. They got some cooking. OTAs, several Eagle reporters are saying Jalen Hurts are put Jalen Hurts is putting passes on the dime. He's putting them on the money. And Devontae Smith is why receiving number one. Even AJ Brown is saying it. And AJ Brown is a dynamo in his own right. But even AJ Brown is saying, hey, Devontae Smith, Smitty is wide receiver one. Smitty is out here working Darius Slade. Working 
of a new corner of Bradbury. Like, he's working elite all-pro corners. I mean, Smitty working them guys and catching the ball, turning up, getting up and down the field, scoring. So, you got some cooking here with Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown in the midst of all of this. So, that NFC East, for a while, you know, people thought Cowboys to run away with. I look at this NFC East, and I look at the Eagles, the team to beat. I, I think Jalen Hurts is going to silence a lot of people. Just like I feel like Tua is going to silence a lot of people, I think Jalen Hurts is going to silence a lot of people with the work he continues to put in. And you got Devontae Smith having a good OTAs as wide receiver one here. We got to shout out my man Bill, Big Bill from New York with that 5-0-2. In the Super Chat, showing love. Appreciate that coming from our man, Bill. But we take a break right here, folks. Don't touch that down. When we return, we discuss there, is a f- there are a few Alabama players that will don new jersey numbers, including a couple of true freshmen. Get acquainted with these new jersey numbers right after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. All right, people, we're back in from the break on the hottest show on the streets, talking New York Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, George truly, Stephen M. Smith, John Ivory also in here, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate the love coming from all of you on today. And before we get into the final topic of discussion, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. That's TDAWare.com. So get all of your swag, sauce, drip, culture, clothing fashion needs right here tdawear.com make us your one-stop shop get yourself set up right now summer workouts fall camp 2022 college football season by getting your gear to support and cheer on your crimson tie continue supporting coach saban the university of alabama the student athletes and us here at tda by getting this gear but we now look at here You've got a few Crimson Tide players that will be rocking new jersey numbers. So new numbers on their uniforms here. So get, get, get your pens ready. Get your paper ready. Highlight these numbers right here for these players. And first and foremost, you've got Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs, the explosive running back transfer from Georgia Tech. He wore number 13 in spring practice, but he will wear number one. He'll be number uno in the 2022 season in the fall. Gibbs wore number one in his two seasons at Georgia Tech. This past year, Gibbs 746 yards rushing, 740 yards rushing, 470 yards receiving, 589 kickoff return yards, which brought him to a total all-purpose of 1,800 yards there with seven touchdowns. He wore number one at Georgia Tech. He will wear number one for your Alabama Crimson Tide, that being one Jameer Gibbs. Moving on down to Terry on Arnold. He wore number 12 last year. Arnold will wear number three this season in the fall for your Crimson Tide. So redshirt freshman Terry on Arnold, five-star, came in the 2021 class from Tallahassee, Florida, will wear number three for your Crimson Tide this year. Going now to these two freshmen, starting things off with Emmanuel Henderson, five-star running back in this 2022 class. He will wear number 24 
for your Crimson Tide. So Emmanuel Henderson will wear number 24. And last but not least, four-star freshman wide receiver Isaiah Bond from Beaufort, Georgia, will wear number 17 for your Crimson Tide. That's a big number because the last two guys that wore number 17 that were big for Alabama, they were legendary. They made some big stuff happen in that number 17. We're talking Kenyon Drake and running back, and we're talking Jalen Waddle and wide receiver. So this is a big number that Isaiah Bond is putting on here. Can he represent it well? When you talk that number 17 from a skill position aspect offensively. But Isaiah Bond will wear number 17, and those just some numbers there, uh, new numbers for U.S. fans to keep your eye on. Jameer Gibbs going from 13 to 1. Terry on Arnold going from 12 to 3. Emmanuel Henderson as a freshman will wear 24. And Isaiah Bond as a freshman will wear 17. But as always, Tide Nation, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store, if you got the Android phone. Now, for your audio needs, check us out. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm or iHeartRadio got you covered. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll try to be back on Monday continuing the conversation that is Bama football. Remember, Tide fans, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. If you're trying to get the fresh edition, print edition of TDA, the magazine, you go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join. Become a member or a subscriber today. That link in the description also. If you're trying to get your hands on the Four Finger Bling necklace, Four Finger Bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys that we own, the fourthquarter.com. That link in the description as well. But got to appreciate my man, Coach Javon Gopi Sack Sensei out of South Florida coming on here to talk about his training with one Dallas Turner, getting him ready for this upcoming season as a sophomore. Got to shout out you, the outstanding Bama fans, the Bama faithful and family for your love, your support, your calls, your donations to the show, making this your show, your network platform channel in space to talk Bama. Also got to shout out my man John Ivory in the production studio doing his thing. And until next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate, value those husbands, children. You guys continue over the summer doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing to not be bored. Be sure to get yourself those three hearty meals a day. Those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, I'm your man, Stephen M. Smith. You know what it is. You've been listening to In My Own Words. Enjoy your weekend.